You're supposed to hate Harry and Meghan again today because the house that the Queen, the late Queen, gifted them and upon which Harry spent £2.3 million of his own money has now been confiscated by King Charles. Imagine if this was... So imagine if you were writing this story from a point of view of not having had your brain boiled by the fact that Prince, Fa Prince Harry fell in love with a, with a woman of colour. Right? So just, just pretend that the world hadn't been redefined or your attitude to the royal family hadn't been redefined by right-wing media apoplectic about the fact that Prince Harry turned the entire pyramid of privilege in this country on his head by falling in love with an actual woman of colour, right? So, and, and King Charles was currently much more under attack than his sons, okay? Because he used to be very much under attack for the appalling way in which his late wife and Prince Harry's mum was treated and, and indeed the way in which the now Queen was uh, insinuated into public life, having her reputation completely rehabilitated thanks to collusion with newspapers, which was, um, well, I think seeing a sit down for, for a meal with Jeremy Clarkson shortly before Jeremy Clarkson wrote that article about Meghan Markle, which reports today suggest might see him uh, deemed surplus to requirements over at ITV tells you everything you need to know about that, the nature of those relationships and those quid pro quos. So just imagine that Charles was persona non grata with the right wing media and that he had betrayed. This is how you'd write it. Charles betrays his late mother's wishes by depriving Harry of a home in England's green and pleasant land. I'd add that bit as well, a little bit of William Blake there. You can almost hear Hubert Parry tuning up in the background. Cruel Charles, callous Charles. I can't quite get the alliteration. Just sounds a, 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 a tricky, cheesy doesn't work. So cruel Charles deprives, betrays. Cruel Charles betrays late Queen's wishes by stealing Harry's home. Second line. Harry and Meghan denied, denied, denied place in England's green and pleasant land by jealous parent. You see how it would work? Because the Queen gave them a house and he's taken it away. So betraying the late Queen's wishes. That, that is how Churlish Charles, thank you. Churlish Charles, yeah, Churlish Charles. I, it's, it's tricky that because you're weighing up the, the, the alliteration with the stronger adjective. So cruel Charles is much stronger. Churlish Charles. Churlish Charles works pretty well, actually. Churlish Charles steals Harry's house. There it is. Churlish Charles steals Harry's house. Second line, late queen cruelly betrayed by brutal eviction. That's the story, by the way, if you don't know what I'm talking about. Churlish Charles has stolen Harry's house. The late queen wanted him to have it. He spent 2.3 million quid tarting it up and money he repaid actually to the public purse after stepping down from royal duties and lo and behold Charles has demonstrated his according to newspapers he's demonstrated let me tell you what the Daily Mail have to say about it because we could always do with a laugh um, Charles evicting Harry and Meghan from Frogmore is the act of a king putting his country first I love showing you how twisted the media is because if you're not an anorak like me you probably don't notice so that headline could easily be exactly the same story churlish charles steals harry's house late queen betrayed by brutal eviction that exactly the same story right but the invitation to hate in recent years has involved harry and Meghan. Because much of the British media continues to favour a man who paid millions of pounds to a sex trafficking victim who accused him of multiple sex crimes than it does to a man who had the audacity to fall in love with a woman of colour. We've got it. Callous King. Callous King steals Harry's house. That's come from Grant. He's... he's doing a shift as a sub-editor today. Home is better than house, thank you. We're doing this together. Callous King steals Harry's home. Brutal betrayal of late Queen's wishes. That's, that's it, right? Callous King steals Harry's home. Brutal betrayal of late Kit Queen's wishes. And then you'd have people like Amanda Platel writing articles about how terrible. He, he's trampling upon the grave of his beloved mother. It's so awful. It's just pathetic. It is absolutely, it's the infantilization of a nation. I mean, it's been underway for hundreds of years, but occasionally the, the absurdity, the hypocrisy, the base corruption of it is so irresistible that it, it can't help sticking its head above the parapet. Callous King steals Harry's home. There it is. So, any, sorry, that was just a little diversion into who the invitation to hate is being issued to. Who are we supposed to hate today, Keith? 
Harry and Meghan again, James. Okay, thank you. James O'Brien has it again, hitting the nail on the spot. James O'Brien cruel Charles betrays late Queen's wishes by stealing Harry's home. We delve into the shocking story of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle being evicted from Frogmore Cottage, a home gifted by the late Queen herself. King Charles's controversial decision to take back the property Harry renovated with his own funds raises questions about royal priorities and media narratives. Join us as we unravel the truth behind the headlines, exposing the double standards and bias in the British media's portrayal of Harry and Meghan. Is this an act of leadership or a betrayal of his late mother's wishes? The recent eviction of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle from their home at Frogmore Cottage has sent shockwaves through the royal circles and the public alike. This controversial decision by King Charles III has raised serious questions about the motives behind it and whether it truly aligns with the late Queen Elizabeth II's wishes for her grandson. As we delve deeper into the story, it becomes clear that the coveted property, gifted to the Sussexes by the Queen herself, held deep personal significance for Harry. The Duke had personally overseen the renovations, investing his own funds to transform the cottage into a comfortable sanctuary for his young family. Yet, in a move that many perceive as a betrayal of the Queen's legacy, King Charles has now swooped in to reclaim the property, leaving Harry and Meghan without a cherished piece of their history. The British media's coverage of this eviction has been marked by a disturbing pattern of bias and double standards. Outlets that once relentlessly attacked and vilified the Sussexes now find themselves scrambling to justify the King's actions, often resorting to thinly veiled racism and sexism in their reporting. This stark contrast only highlights the deeply rooted prejudices that have long plagued the royal family's dealings with Meghan, a woman of colour, and the unforgiving scrutiny they have faced. As the world watches this unfolding drama, the questions become increasingly pressing. Is this decision a reflection of King Charles's leadership or a blatant disregard for his late mother's wishes? And what message does it send about the royal family's priorities and their treatment of those who dare to challenge the status quo? The news that King Charles has decided to take back Frogmore Cottage from Prince Harry and Meghan Markle has sent shockwaves through the royal household and the British public alike. This property, gifted to the couple by the late Queen Elizabeth II, held deep sentimental value for Harry, who had renovated the cottage using his own personal funds. Yet, in a move that has been widely perceived as a cruel betrayal of the Queen's wishes, the new monarch has now ordered the couple to vacate their home. This controversial decision raises serious questions about the priorities and motivations of the royal family. Many see it as a blatant attempt to further marginalise Harry and Meghan, who have been the targets of relentless media scrutiny and public backlash since their high-profile departure from the firm. The British media, in particular, has been accused of perpetuating double standards and bias in their coverage of the couple, sensationalising every aspect of their lives and stoking public outrage. As the saga continues to unfold, the world watches with bated breath, wondering whether this is an act of leadership or a betrayal of the late Queen's legacy. The eviction of Harry and Meghan from Frogmore Cottage may very well be the latest chapter in a long-running feud, but its implications extend far beyond the walls of the royal household, touching on issues of loyalty, family and the role of the monarchy in the modern era. Betrayal of the Queen's legacy the abrupt eviction of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle from Frogmore Cottage, a home gifted to them by the late Queen Elizabeth II, has raised serious questions about the priorities and motives of the British royal family. This controversial decision by King Charles coming shortly after the Queen's passing smacks of a betrayal of her wishes and a troubling double standard in how the couple is portrayed by the British media. While the official narrative frames this as a necessary logistical move, it reeks of retaliation and a desire to distance the monarchy from the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. The frenzied media coverage, laced with racism and sexism, has long demonstrated a clear bias against Meghan, in stark contrast to the kid glove treatment afforded to other royals. This eviction sends a chilling message that even the Queen's personal gifts are not sacrosanct, undermining the very notion of a unified, benevolent royal family. As we delve deeper into this shocking story, it becomes increasingly clear that this is not an act of principled leadership, but rather a betrayal of the late Queen's apparent wishes and a troubling perpetuation of double standards. The British public deserves answers, and the true motivations behind this controversial decision must be brought to light, unravelling the truth. 
The shocking story behind the headlines paints a disturbing picture of the royal family's treatment of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. The news of their eviction